I'm Claudia Catania, and you're listening to Playing On Air. Theaters across the world are still sitting empty, but Play Me from CBC Podcasts continues to keep playwrights connected to a global audience. Even before the pandemic, Play Me specialized in adapting stage shows into unforgettable audio dramas. And now they're bringing their skill set to a new lineup of timely plays from some of North America's most acclaimed creators for the stage. You can subscribe to Play Me on CBC Listen app or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, Playing On Air listeners. It's your host, Claudia Catania. While we prepare for a season of brand new plays for this spring, here's a favorite from Playing On Air's vault to keep you company. We hope you'll enjoy it as much as we do. And don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts so other theater lovers can discover Playing On Air too. As always, thanks for listening and on with the show. You are about to hear the final interrogation of Ceausescu's dog by Warren Light. It features Ed Asner as the dog and Jesse Eisenberg as the interrogator. This play is inspired by a true historical event. We are in Bucharest, Romania. It is New Year's Eve, 1989. Six days before on Christmas, Romania's dictator of 24 years, Nicolae Ceausescu, was shot to death after a trial of one and a half hours. We are in a small interrogation room. A dog sits on a chair as the interrogation commences. The people believe you are beyond reform. Some want you to suffer, others to die right away. Because ours is now a just and fair system, you are entitled to make a statement. What do you have to say for yourself? I am Ceausescu's dog. His daughter's dog, actually, but she is rather unstable. Even though he gave me to her, I have always considered him to be my true master. You know that your master was a cruel and ruthless tyrant who brought misery to his people and shame to his nation. I am dog of Ceausescu, and my relationship to him is simple relationship of dog to master. You do acknowledge that master was a tyrant. No. The wife can be a bit stern, I will say that. And the daughter, as I say, has many moods. But I am my master's pride and joy, and I've known nothing but love and affection from him. You are talking about the most reviled despot in our nation's history. Do you understand that anyone still loyal to him is subject to the death penalty? Listen, where is my master? He will straighten this whole thing out, and you will be sorry, let me tell you. Your master is dead. Hmm? He was shot like a dog, in the courtyard as he tried to flee the people's wrath on Christmas Day. He will not be happy when he hears how you have treated me. He is not coming back. He has gone straight to hell, where he will burn for all time. He travels often, you know. Uh, Just last month, he was in Iran. They love him everywhere he goes. He told me so. He was shot dead. He is not coming back. I see. Do you? No, I am simple dog. The people believe you are beyond reform. I am simple doggy. But you lived on imported meat while our people were starving. You ate the finest veal. Sometimes lamb or steak. While people starved. I did not see any people starving. You didn't? The people in the palace were all well fed. They ate anything I left over. Often they even pinched some for themselves. Well, what could you do, servants? I have heard they weighed your veal on a scale of gold. Yes. And I will tell you the truth. That was not done for my benefit. The gold I always felt left a slight metallic taste. I believe this all came about so that the servants would not pinch from my supper. While our people lacked basic medical care, you were given drugs and vitamins flown in from Prague. I have allergies. You were bathed daily in glacier water. I hated the baths. Uh, Again, because of my allergies. How did you feel about the sacrifices the people were making, the suffering they endured while, while you were pampered? The people always loved me. The servants were especially kind to me. Once, 
Uh, once I was mistreated, but that did not happen again. Ah, yes. <clears throat> yes, you bit the hand of Salvo while he was feeding you. He slapped you, and then because he slapped you, he was put to death. Is that correct? I was not slapped again by him. Well, it's true, then, that you bit the hand that fed you. Sure. Why? It tastes good. Aren't you aware that it might cause suffering? I did not suffer. But, but the man whose hand you bit. I don't understand. You bit the man's hand. Yes, of course. He was trying to feed you. Yes, yes. But we've been over this. Weren't you aware that it might cause suffering? I did not suffer. <gasps> but the man whose hand you bit. Yes. Did you not for one second think about him, his hand, the pain you... <sighs> My face was here. His hand was here. If he did not want me to bite it, he should not have placed it so near my teeth. Listen, where is my master? He will straighten this out. Your master is dead. You don't know him. This interrogation cannot end until... Mm. In your house, you had your own oriental rug. It was Bohara. A Bohara? Yes. Again, this was not my choice. I liked the feel of it... But its taste was nothing to get excited and about. And this rug was red, was it not? The same color as the blood shed by our people under the hand of your master. Again, I loved the feel of it, but the color that was for them. I do not see color, you know. I am simple dog. You are a simple dog? Yes. Then fetch. Pardon? Fetch this hat, simple doggy. Come on. Mm, come on, fetch little doggy. You are joking. Jump up. Jump. Go on, jump, jump! You are you are a simple dog. Then fetch, fetch! Come on! Are you out of your mind? Do you know who my master is? He is not coming back. Really? Well, in that case, <laughs> I will just sit right here and wait for him to come back. You may go now. But no, 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 no. When I, I want something, I will let you know. But now go. Uh, Get shoe. It, it's okay, boy. Good boy. Good boy, good boy. It's okay. That was the final interrogation of Ceausescu's dog, written and directed by Warren Light. You heard Ed Asner as the dog and Jesse Eisenberg as the interrogator. I am so delighted to welcome Warren Light, the author of The Final Interrogation of Ceausescu's Dog, and also the Tony Award winner for Sidemen. Also joining us is gazillion Emmy Award winner Ed Asner, who played the dog in Warren's play. Oof. Oof. Well, so Warren, as you wrote, and Ed, as you read, what kind of dog did you envision? I envisioned Ed as the dog from the t time I wrote it 15 years ago. You're calling him a dog. No, I, what I wanted and what I think we had today, I was very happy. Uh, the dog is a master, I guess, and, and I think we got lucky. Ed is too. But it's very easy to live in a comfortable way and be oblivious to the suffering of others. I think that's what this dog is telling us about his life. He was not aware of the suffering of others. It wasn't his concern. Well, he, he couldn't be, it seems, uh, as you've written him. Uh, he could not be even be made to realize it no matter what you did. There's nothing you can do to get this dog to understand. And is the relationship between a dog and a master like that, between a dictator and a subject, would you say? Yes. I, I don't know that you can reach people like this or dogs like this. I, uh, I had a therapist once, and I asked her about narcissists, and she said, well, they don't get better. Uh, I don't treat them because they don't get better, but I know psychiatrists who treat them because they're steady customers, and if you let them release a little steam every week, they keep coming back. I don't know that this dog is capable of of changing. Part of why I wrote it, uh, I was raised in the Unitarian Church as a compromise between my Jewish mother, my Jewish father and Catholic mother. I was raised Unitarian, also politically active, uh, and and still am, uh, you know, fervent, but I had another experience in life in my 20s. I taught English in China. Uh, that also opened my eyes because it, it, that was not running any better than things here. In fact, in many ways worse. Part of what this play says is it is power that seems to corrupt more than the specifics of who's wielding that power or what their political 
basis is. And an ignorant electorate. Well, that's... If you have an electorate. Yes. <laughs> the people in Romania suffered greatly, and the government was taken out, and people cheered, and a year later, almost everyone who had been in power was still in power. Change happens, and then... History repeats itself. And if you could be dictator for a day, what would your first edict be? Establish nutritional standards for everybody in the country. That's an easy one. And then educational standards, far superior than no child left behind. And then make sure that there were jobs. I can't stop at one. <laughs> I want to thank you both for spending some time with us and talking about your careers and this wonderful play. Thank you. Really. Thank you. It was a great pleasure. You've been listening to Playing On Air, Great American Short Plays with Great American Actors. Associate Producer, Michelle O'Brien. Literary Manager, Bonnie Antosh. Literary Assistant, Aditya Pratama. Marketing and Communications Manager, Shelley Horwitz. Theme and Play Music, Tom Cochan. Recording and Sound Design, John Kilgore. Playing on Air is distributed by PRX, Public Radio Exchange. For Playing on Air, I'm your host, Claudia Catania. Thanks for listening.